George, my God, what have you done? What have you done? So George did an interview and it was recently translated from German because it was done in German, obviously. I mean, I don't know. Anyways, continuing on. And I love this interview because not only does it come across that George just has zero fucks to give anymore. You know when you get to that age and you just, you don't care. You've met so many garbage human beings that you're like, I just, I really don't give a fuck anymore. I'm gonna be me. You're gonna be you. And uh, that's the end of that story. I kind of feel like we've pushed George to the edge and there's no going back now. That being said, George did an interview, which was, again, recently translated, so if there are translation errors, um... It's gonna reflect poorly on me because of my family. But anyways, uh, of course he was asked about the next two, last two, Song of Ice and Fire books, and answered a bunch of other questions in relation to Game of Thrones that I found to be a bit interesting, but at the same time, I can see where it might rile some people up just a little bit. I mean, what doesn't rile people up though, honestly? So first I wanna read to you his response when he was asked about the pressure of having the show done and him still having two books to go. So on that, George said, You see, when it comes to writing novels, I can only take one step at a time. I have writer friends who can work simultaneously on three or four completely different projects. They start with a novel in the morning, continue with short stories in the afternoon, and in the evening they write a screenplay. I can't do that. When I write novels, I immerse myself completely in a fictional world. It takes up all my imagination. I have to live through it. Editing a draft text, working on films as a producer, or simply being a cinema owner is easier compared to writing a novel. Which, any of us that have stalked George for many years know that the man does not multitask. That's nothing new in this interview. He's basically saying, yeah, I'm working on a lot of different projects right now. And I shouldn't be, probably, because I have to focus on one thing at a time, so, oops. He was also asked how he feels about the fans knowing the ending of his books due to the show ending. And how he responded, I think it's gonna cause a little bit of an uproar, but it's really not too different than what he's said before. So here is George's uh, response to that. Counter question. How many children did Scarlett O'Hara have? In Margaret Mitchell's novel, Gone with the Wind, she had three children. But in the cinema version of the novel, she only had one child. Which version is the only valid one? The one with one child or the one with three? The answer is neither of the two because Scarlett O'Hara never existed. She is a fictional character, not a real person who have had real children. Or take The Little Mermaid. We know her from the fairy tale of the same name by Hans Christian Andersen, and from the Disney film. Which one is the real mermaid? Well, mermaids don't exist. You can choose the version- Jesus, George. You can choose the version you like best. That goes for any story adapted for cinema or television. In this process, change is inedible. Even if the adaptation is as faithful to the literary origin as it was in Game of Thrones. Okay, so I'm just gonna address that last sentence really quick so we can move past that. George said the show was incredibly faithful to his material. What? George. Do you want people to come after you? Because this is how you get people to come after you. Two! How dare you say mermaids aren't real? Fuck you! Three, obviously the version where the redhead gets the prince and lives happily ever after is the real version. So I guess this kind of goes into what George has said with pronouncing character names. So those of us that started reading the books decades ago, dear God, know that you pronounce the names a little bit differently than how they did in the show versus even <laughs> even the audiobook the dude that narrated it for a long time and recently passed away uh very sad he would say names differently 
all the fucking time. It was absolutely amazing. There, there wasn't a lot of consistency uh, sometimes with the audiobooks. And it was just something that was a lot of fun. And even George said, I don't really care how you pronounce these names. It's not that big of a deal. They're fictional fucking characters. Please calm down. So I think he has the same feeling when it comes to the show versus the books. Which do you like better? Which do you feel is the real ending or the real fate of that character? He's like, you do you. You pick which one you want. It's not that big of a deal. So I actually do like that. I, it's kind of like people that are all pissed off about Star Wars and it being Legends now, Disney taking all the old expanded universe material and throwing it out. That can still be your canon. You can still choose to read those books and decide that Luke in Legends is your Luke. You, you don't have, just because a corporation tells you this is now canon doesn't mean that's what you have to go by. I mean, as long as you're not telling other people that that's official canon, who gives a shit? <laughs> but George also said that people know the end, but not the end when it comes to his books. So I think that has more to do with, we know the end destinations of a lot of characters, but we don't know how they get there. And I know I've said this a million times, so if you watch all my videos, you probably have heard this so many times that you know the words that are about to come out of my mouth from my brain thoughts. We know Danny dies in the end, but George is going to make it more believable and not rush it and give more of an explanation. And well, maybe not like that she dies in the end, but we'll understand a bit better than the rush shit show we got. <laughs> so we know the end, but we don't know exactly how that end comes about and all the little things and details that go with it. And I'm not saying that I know what's going on in George's head, but we also know that he's a gardener. He's not an architect. He doesn't know, he plants seeds and he sees where those go. So things could change in his book. He has two more books to write. And as he's going along, he could change things. So maybe in the end, Danny doesn't die. Maybe he gets to that final book and decides, you know, through writing these chapters, I actually see a different path for her that I like more. So I'm not trying to give you false hope, but it could happen. Characters definitely could have a different destination in the books as George writes them. Many of us probably remember George doing readings or giving out certain information at conventions and then the book would come out or World of Ice and Fire would come out and then all of a sudden, those details weren't the same. In fact, some of them were complete opposites. He's a gardener. Sometimes as he writes, he changes. He goes back and scraps chapters or entire days <laughs> of work because he just realizes, yeah, I don't like this. I see a different route I want to go or I haven't seen the exact route yet and this just isn't working. So if you're really upset with the end fate of certain characters in the show that are obviously still alive in the books, have a little bit of hope. At least that you'll be given enough information and details that you will understand why it happened. Lastly, he was asked if a director could ever make a feature length movie from Game of Thrones or any of the books, and this was his response. At this point in time, it wouldn't be for me to decide because HBO controls the film rights for Game of Thrones. Apart from that, we had actually considered this option. David Benioff and Dan Weiss, the two creators behind the series, actually wanted to end the saga after the seventh season with three big movies. Game of Thrones was to end in the cinema. Four or five years ago, it was seriously discussed. I actually think that would have been pretty awesome to see, honestly, especially with how rushed <laughs> the final seasons were. I think three big movies, one released each year, would have been absolutely amazing. But I understand that HBO wasn't really in the business of releasing movies. They were all about television shows. So there you go, there's some George news. Like, subscribe, and let me know what you think about what he said in the comment section down below. Are you thinking maybe the end destination for certain characters will change as he writes more? Do you think that the end fate of most characters are going to be the same? Again, ones that are still alive in the books. 
I know there's a lot of characters that are alive or not alive that are alive or not alive in the books. It's a whole thing. You know what I mean. And how much do you love George on a scale from one to 10? 10 being you could hug him to death and one being you could hug him to death. 